Hi, this is Brendan Davis from Bedrock Games and the Bedrock Blog, and I'm here with Dion and Jeremy for another episode of Wuxia Weekend to talk about Heroes of the East. This is a 1978 Lao Kar Lung film. Uh, it's kind of an interesting martial arts movie that is centered around domestic life in an odd way. Uh, you know, the, the basics of the story are uh, uh, Gordon Liu's character, is uh, a man from China who marries a woman from Japan, and they get into sort of a War of the Roses type situation over, a, you know, the differences between Chinese and Japanese martial arts, and that escalates to the point that she goes back to Japan, and uh, members of a school that her master is affiliated with come to China to challenge him, and there's a series of fights, and you know, it, it's a it's it's a pretty simple storyline but it's it's uh you know it's kind of an interesting movie uh so this was jeremy's idea and i know jeremy you said that your feelings on this film had changed between the two viewings so i kind of wanted to jump into that topic before we uh get into anything else sure i mean yeah like i i want to say that the first time i watched this movie was probably 10 years ago if not more than that, it's hard. I, it's hard to say. I can't quite remember. And I remember the first time I saw it, I just really, really liked it. I thought it was so super cool. And I haven't watched it since then. Well, actually, I, so I take that back. When I was in China, I actually remember watching it. <laughs> now that I think about it, and that was probably about maybe six years ago. I, I just recalled that. So, but anyway, in any case, it's been quite a few years. And so my feelings have changed since then. And I have a definitely have a different take. And I think some of that is because this time I was able to watch it in Chinese and understand it. Uh, I watched it on a Chinese website with no subtitles. Incidentally, in China, all the movies have subtitles, Chinese subtitles, I mean. So it makes it a lot easier to watch the movies in the theater because it has Chinese subtitles in the theater. But this was kind of a little bit too old of a film, so no subtitles on the website. Um, anyway, the the point is that hearing the dialogue in, in Chinese for me, I think, changed it a lot. So it's so it, it was less enjoyable in the – like in the original – intended tone of the film you think was not as entertaining to you as the dub version that you had seen before uh I, pr probably because and in order to, to i wanted to make sure that i wasn't just reading too much into it so i there was one specific scene where i forced my wife to watch it no my wife's chinese i forced her to watch it the english dubbed version and then the chinese version and she also agreed that the tone is is very different. And okay. basically, so it comes down to this: in the Chinese version, the main character, uh, Gordon Liu's character, I forgot what he's called. Um, he is a lot less likable when he's speaking Chinese than okay. when he is dubbed in in English. And when I think when you read the subtitles, you're also not going to pick up on the tone that he has in Chinese. So I'll give you an example, like. In the, so the scene I made my wife watch is the one where he is explaining to her about how uh, Chinese women kick when they're using their martial arts. Yeah, yeah Dion, you and brought like, that up uh, last episode, actually, remember? Mm -hmm. So in the dubbed version, this is what it sounds like. He'll be like, um, in, China, in, China, in China, the women are very gentle and delicate when they kick like this. And then she's like, did you just kick me? Yes, I kicked you here. That is why Chinese women kick like this. But in Chinese, if you, the, his tone of voice in Chinese, he'll be like, don't you know that women don't kick like that? They kick like this. It's way better. And so like, okay. it just comes across as being a little bit different. Let's put it that okay. way. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. No, I was, I mean, I was wondering about that for different reasons because early on in the movie, the exchange between him and the servant was a little bit playful and humorous, and, but most of it seemed to be coming from the tone of voice. So I was wondering, I was like, oh, I should ask Jeremy if, if the, if, if it's as funny as it is in, in, in Chinese as in English. Um, uh, it's actually way funnier in Chinese. Okay. <laughs> the opening. So, so, you're talking so about that's meant to be humorous. Scene. That scene is the, yeah. And it's way funnier in Chinese 
So I, I, I actually didn't watch the subtitled version this time around. I watched it in Chinese, then I watched it in English dubbed. But I, so I can't remember. I don't know if the Chinese subtitled version uses the same uh, dialogue as the dubbed version. But in the dubbed version, there's a lot of differences, and I, the Chinese did come across as being way funnier. I think in general, because this is one of those movies where there's like kind of like word play and different things like that that come into it, and they they didn't make very much of an attempt to care to do that. At least in the subbed version, they were clearly trying to match the English intonation with like the head movements and the mouth movements. And although I would say it's pretty accurate, there was some stuff that was lost in the translation there. Okay. Now, now, Dion, how did uh, did how did you feel about this movie? What were your thoughts on it? I I like this movie. This wasn't my first time watching it. Mm-hmm. Um, I obviously like that. You know, there's a a female character that's that's good in the movie. I just wish we had seen more of her fighting throughout the movie and not just at the beginning of the movie to spark this kind of war between the two nations. Um, and I like the showcase of the different weapons from both countries and watching both styles. Yeah, I, I, I like the movie too. I, I've seen it before as well. and uh, But this time I watched it on Amazon with the dubs and normally I watch it with the subs. And so, uh, the you know, it's it, I like how Lark, Lau Kar Lung is remember there was a scene in um I forget I forget if it was Executioners from Shaolin but one of those movies uh where there was a wedding night scene and the the husband and the wife have kind of a playful uh kung fu battle before they can sleep together type thing it was yeah, sort of like that I yeah, yeah. Was, I, I know you like that scene, and I like it too. And this movie felt like a real expansion of that idea, where it's just you know he takes it into the whole marriage, and I found that charming. I found I f- I thought the woman who played the wife was very very uh, good in that role, and I and I like that when she was doing the form early in the movie. Like I like I used to have I used to do martial arts. I remember doing forms, and the rhythm of the form looked very convincing to me. So I was I was very persuaded by her capabilities in uh early in that film and uh but yeah i I think it's i think it's a fun movie and i like i like the fight scenes like you're saying and i like the whole uh i don't know the it's got a lot of these kung fu craze elements to them but it's done in a much different way than a lot of the other usually it's like a japanese school you know comes and takes over the chinese school or something like that and this was just a much more interesting way to have that kind of a feud um but and I want to talk about the Japanese versus Chinese things. I know we, we were discussing that beforehand. But Jeremy, I, just before we move on, I did want to get what is your takeaway now? Like, have you, how do you how do you resolve those two different opinions that you had of the movie? Like, what's your what's your current take on the film? I mean, well, to be perfectly honest, I think that some of it has to do with <clears throat> um, you know growing up. like growing up as a person since the previous time I watched it and being so um, entrenched in the Chinese way of thinking, Uh, not the Chinese way of thinking, but let's, I lived in China for eight years and that definitely changed my perspective. So when I first saw it, I didn't really have any perspective on that whole China versus Japan thing. Okay. But being within China for so long, you know, my wife's Chinese, I get, I, I look at it differently now. And so I don't find it as amusing, I guess. Like when okay. I first saw it, I had no context. And I was just like, ah, this is pretty funny, Japan, China. But when you live there and you experience the attitude of um, China versus Japan, it's a lot less funny, I guess. Okay, okay. No, I mean, that's definitely... And I think people are aware of that these days now, too. I think it's just more of a... It's, it's uh, you know, it, it it's very... Uh, it's it's obviously one of these topics that is probably bigger than this program is capable of really getting too deep into. But the way that I tend to look at it is, I like I say, okay, what if I swap out like England for China and Germany for Japan? Do you know what I mean? That's like the closest analog I can come up with in my mind of, uh, you know, 
like how that kind of residual conflict might might play out with like stereotypes and things because usually the depiction of japanese characters are pretty stereotypical um i will say in this movie though they're not quite as stereotypical as in some like in a lot of them they have them wear like like big noses and like like they they have like really really thick eyebrow like they're like these you know stereotype racial characters that they that they sort of do with them and and in this one it was it was a the Japanese characters felt more like real characters to me, even though they were, it was still like you were saying before the show, still China versus Japan. And even though by the end of the movie, they're sort of supposed to have mutual respect. You're still supposed to kind of walk away with martial arts from China are better than Japanese martial arts is the, uh, you know, um, but yeah, no deal. What did you, did you have any thoughts on that one? No, I totally agree with it. Um, I think that because our perspective is different and we can't totally understand what it's like, it does come off in a different tone, like Jeremy was saying. Obviously, we don't know what their life is like to Jeremy's extent in in China, and we don't get to see what goes on every day. So it would make sense that he would have a completely different perspective. I thought it was funny, but the more I learn about history in China and Japan and that part of the world, it just, it does tone the funny down. Hmm. Yeah. Like I don't want to be a a, a big downer, but it's like to give you some perspective, like, You know, I've seen marches on the streets, anti-Japanese marches, but also anti-American marches as well. So, I mean, it's it's it is what it is. But the thing is, in China, even to this day, there is a huge an open uh, disgust or hatred for Japan in general. Like, okay, so I used to teach kids and I'm talking kids ages, you know, three to 10 or 12. And I, I on many occasions would ask kids things like, what are you going to do on summer vacation? Mm-hmm. And I would have kids be like, I'm going to go to Japan and kill the president. And all the other kids like would laugh and stuff. And I would be like, no, we're not going to do that. But I mean, that's just the kind of attitude. Everybody, parents to kids are are talking down about that. But anyway, so again, I don't want to be downer. I, I did want to circle back around to point out that definitely agree that they portrayed the the Japanese guys as being pretty honorable and and just and then in the end yeah. they all kind of were friends yeah. sort of so i mean not in that sense it was there, it was good I liked there that. was only one japanese character that was portrayed as dishonorable i think and it was the guy who showed up at 1201 yeah. in order to to do the whole you know because because so in this movie they they go they go and confront him and they basically say we're going to have one of our guys fight you once a day and so it's kind of an honorable thing because it's like they know he's going to get tired and a lot of these movies you have to fight the guys back to back and the the guy's you know going to be exhausted by the time he fights the sixth person so you know so this one guy shows up at midnight and sits down and then when the clock strikes midnight he's like oh it's tomorrow so we can fight now (laughs) and yeah that was kind of dirty (laughs) but uh but yeah, so so I'm sorry. Go on. You were saying that they, but they're portrayed as generally so, honorable. You know, it wasn't like it was like the the film wasn't like super stereotypical anti Japanese, which is cool. And they, and and I although I found the tone to be different, there it was still really funny. Like especially one of the scenes I cracked up the most at was when they're like revealing all of their secret weapons or their hidden weapons, and he's like darts and then she's like Japanese <laughs> yeah. shuriken or whatever I forget what, what that, that was fun be. well I was thinking yeah. geez like they would have actually have had to prepare in advance for this conversation and have like do you know what I mean like he had to go to his room and get all these weapons she had to go to her room and get a, like it, you don't see that in the movie but it's just like practically they would have the other thing I like about that scene is he, he had the things strapped to his back that shoot out the darts and he had the sleeve thing that shoots out the dart and he actually pulled his sleeve down and showed you how it worked do you know what I mean? Like they don't norm- usually it's just a tube and they don't pull the sleeve down and you, you don't get to see how it's strapped to the arm and all that stuff. And I thought it was interesting that both those devices, he kind of he kind of pulled the clothing back a little bit to show you more. Um, I think that's kind of one of the best parts of this movie. And probably I think the reason why I liked it so much originally is that it just showcases so many different kinds of weapons and and styles and 
it's a little bit unbelievable. I mean, if you if you step take a step back and think about it, he is basically just some random guy, and he's not even portrayed as being really good fighter in China, and yet he beats all like the top masters of <laughs> from Japan. But anyway, the that you know the point of being able to see all these different style versus style, weapon versus weapon is like really cool. I think this would be yeah. a good so, introductory film for people who aren't familiar with styles and weapons and stuff because it's just so much. Though I did want to say he 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 is a normal guy, but he did kind of surreptitiously learn kung fu from Master So. So you know he got this. You know he 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 did get this. Uh, you know, again, who knows how much he was able to glean from that that little. Ex- right, right. You know, but um, but yeah. So so uh, yeah, I I I really like the wife in this movie. I thought I I thought like the scene where she's breaking up like all the statues because he doesn't have sandbags for her and she's destroying the walls. Like that, that I thought that was a very entertaining scene. I liked, I liked how destructive she was and how, uh, just how quickly everything escalated to, to, I mean, it's a bloodless movie. It's not like it's, you know, like the, I think the bloodiest thing that happens is he gets cut in the arm when they want you to know how dangerous nu- ninjutsu is. But, <laughs> right. But, uh, but just how quickly things escalate to violence was, you know, and done it. it but, but again, was that the scenes where she's smashing the statues, were those meant to be funny in the Chinese or were they meant to be more serious in the Chinese? I think they were, I think it was all funny in, in Chinese. Okay. Yeah. I mean, up, up to the, you know, up until the part where the actual duels kind of start, it was pretty much all comedy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Lao Kar Lung usually has kind of a lighter tone, I feel so. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Any, any, uh, any other thoughts on the Japanese versus Chinese thing before we move on to another? Not for me. Okay. Um, I don't. I think this movie reminds me a lot of, and I think I one of you guys might have mentioned this already. I think, but uh, it reminds me a lot of Legendary Weapons of China, and it feels like these two movies would be great to watch back to back as sort of like a double feature, because you get sort of like the it's almost like the Legendary Weapons of Japan versus the Legendary Weapons of China. Yeah, it's been so many years since I watched Legendary Weapons of China. Man, I ha- I'm I'm having to like Google it to to pull up the cover to remind myself of it. But, I mean, yeah. there are more weapons in that one on the Chinese side, obviously, than this one. But it, you know, just as this sort of concept, it seemed kind of a, a similar thing. Yeah, I think the I think you have a good idea on that to showcase them back to back because you get so many different weapons and legendary weapons of China. I, I saw in a documentary that there were like 36 different weapons that were showcased in that movie and they had to learn how to use them all to make sure they used them authentically. Yeah, and this one you get, you know, like, and I guess this would be a good time to go into the fights where a lot of the, what the fights are, are there's some guy who specializes in like a Japanese weapon and he has to find the appropriate Chinese weapon to to sort of pair with that in a duel. And and it's interesting to see what choices he makes, you know, like like one guy's using nunchucks, so he uses the three section staff. And I think another one is using the, the size. So he uses the butterfly swords, which seem pretty logical. Um, and, you know, and the final guy obviously is using the, the, the ninjutsu, which the uh, the the wife had established was so dangerous and lethal early in the movie. Um, yeah, there was some, you know, there's some. I don't want to harp on the language aspect because I, I know I always do that, but there definitely was a lot of stuff that didn't come through. Like, for instance, um, man, what what did he... They, they had a play on ninjutsu because I maybe you know in, 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 uh, in Chinese and Japanese, both ninjutsu is basically like the art of patience, sort of. And so they played off of that in a lot of the dialogue. Um, okay. And there was other stuff as well. Like, for instance, you know... Uh, in Chinese, a uh, nunchuck or nunchaka is just a two-section staff. So they played off the two-section staff and the three-section staff. And if I remember correctly, doesn't like his breaks or I forget one of the sections breaks and like so there was a little bit of wordplay going off of that. And then there was also how he, um, you know, he criticized the ninja guy 
for using ninjutsu because it's like dishonorable or whatever although i was wondering why that was the case when he like had like the shooting behind i was wondering yeah Yeah. well no so here's the thing here's why i think it was i think he was doing all that within the context of a contest but the the scene there was one scene where his wife's on the ceiling and she rains down these like darts on him and it and it cuts his arm and she's not trying to kill him but like the music changes and like his facial expression is all concerned and and she's like, this is ninjutsu. And he's like, in, in the dubs, I don't know, maybe they call it something else in the Chinese version. But in the dubs, he says, well, we call that murder. <laughs> and like, yeah. and it's like the tone of every, it just everything shifts so suddenly on that. that That's where like their relationship really seems to kind of go south. And then she ends up back in Japan. <laughs> but I thought that was, that, that was like, I thought that's the best rebuttal to anything. Like, you know, if, if somebody does so, you say, well, that's murder. Then they, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was just so filled with judgment but but you're right like but then he's got like all these secretive devices that he's using so it's yeah. a it's a it's it's a little bit a little bit hypocritical perhaps um but uh but yeah so i don't did anybody have any uh, favorite fight scenes that they want to talk about or well i gotta say that um the, the 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 final ninja fight scene was the most ridiculous uh, in a good way ridiculous but it was like so much ridiculous stuff in that fight scene with like the crab style and then he's like <laughs> like swimming under the water like with the reed and and all that kind of stuff it was i thought it, it, i was laughing i think in a in a in a good way though i i love that stuff i my my like the the Everybody has like a big first martial arts movie that they really loved. And for me, it was always Snake in the Eagle Shadow. So, and that's filled with, you know, like snake style versus, you know, like, so it, I, 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 I like that kind of a thing. Um, but, but yeah, especially now, like in this, in the age of like practical martial arts, it, it, it doesn't always land the same. But I, I, I think if you're looking at it as, as a movie where it's more fantastical, you know, it, it works. But 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 I liked how that final battle played out. How he 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 ended up by the river, and the guy uses the the poof of poisonous powder to, you know, and and it turns out that you know he he you know he's he's, he's pretending to be unconscious or unresponsive yeah, um, that was good. i think you know you actually touched on i think the the key aspect which is um like two things one the practical martial arts stuff because before you know i wasn't didn't even watch any like ufc or mma stuff before i moved to china it was after i moved to china and i became friends with the guys that were really into that that i started watching that stuff and that really sort of kind of took the wind out of my sails to some extent in my sort of like like a fantasy version of martial arts uh-huh. and that has kind of <clears throat> had an effect on it and the other one was doing so much research uh you know it's a topic for a different video but you and i have worked on multiple games together dealing with these kind yep. of wuxia, historical chinese martial arts and in doing so much research around that kind of stuff and learning about the realities of martial arts and weapons has also, you know, kind of changed my view. So, for example, in the they had one fight which was katana versus the Chinese um, double-edged straight sword, the jian, yeah. and um, it was a really cool fight scene. But I could, like during the entire thing, I was just thinking to myself, like, how would this work in reality? Like, I I don't like I've read a lot about the jian sword and how it works in martial arts and you know I've gotten in arguments with people online about it and what what not and so I couldn't stop thinking about you know in real life if you had two guys that were really good one with really good trained had a combat experience with a katana and then you had an, had somebody with a jian sword combat training experience and they were both roughly evenly matched and it was it did come down to the the weapon i i just wonder how it would actually play out i mean i i don't know enough about sword play but i know that in the judo scene the first judo scene when she's using judo on him some of the things that he was doing to counter the judo i i i'm not a judo expert but i did judo for a few months and some of the stuff that he was doing to counter it i don't think would have done anything do you know what i mean yeah, um yeah. but it's a movie so that's sort of it's how movie, i yeah. you know like i i've i've had this progression where i started out 
like I got into martial arts because I wanted to learn how to fly. Do you know what I mean? Like I was into like the <laughs> like the most fantastical type of stuff that you would see in kung fu movies. That's what I wanted to do. And then and then like the UFC stuff kind of came around. I got I got I got knocked out by a Burmese kickboxer, and that really awakened me to the uh, the realities of yeah. you know. And and, and so I uh, so I went through a phase where I got really into MMA, and I was very critical whenever I would go back and watch my old Kung Fu movies. But, but then like after I was in that phase for a while, I reached a point where I was, I, I just jettisoned that. And I was like, well, it's just a movie, you know, like, like, um, and there's also like, there's like a difference between different martial arts serve different functions. Do you know what I mean? And so some of them are more about cultivation of other things and the martial arts are, you know, a means to that end. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and I mean, it's a deep topic, so I don't want to get derailed because it's, it's very complicated and, and I'm simplifying just in order to not, uh, get bogged down. But, right. but I think, I think in this movie, uh, especially in the year it was made, this is like a, this is like a, this was a really good karate versus kung fu type of film do you know what i mean like this was made you know over a decade before the ufc was even you know on the air so uh you know you know i i think that it was a a really good um you know depiction of of that style and i like i i think i think there's something there's something very cool about that particular combination of karate versus kung fu because karate is very linear and very chambered and and has very like very powerful and kung fu is a little bit more fluid and i mean obviously there's a number of different kung fu styles but just generally it's it's a little bit more fluid it's uh it's the footwork is different it doesn't seem quite as chambered as as karate to me um and so i think cinematically they work really good uh you know and i I think that's why in the kung fu craze you know you that that combination you know is so consistent because you know there's not just the the animosity that we were talking about before but visually they they actually work together really well um what did you guys think of the like i totally forgot there was drunken boxing in this movie and i'm always like excited to see non jackie chan drunken boxing not that i dislike jackie chan drunken boxing but whenever it's somebody else doing it i'm always excited about it well and that was that um was that lao kar lung who was playing beggar so or i am I, not sure i think it was lao kar lung playing I think it, uh you know what i think you're right yeah yeah i, I think it was and Number one, the thing I noticed watching it this time, he's got some strong forearms and strong legs. Like when he was lifting up that, I mean, I know it's a movie and he might, you know, there are probably wires on him and stuff. But when he was lifting up that that stool with his legs, you know, he, his, his toes seemed pretty strong to me, um, <laughs> which is something you don't normally notice about a person in a movie. And uh, I, 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 I liked the way that they introduced it. I, you know, again, I think that... Um, I think that it's it's to me it's it's not like the most iconic portrayal of it, but it it adds something to the movie, and it's kind of different than a lot of the other versions of of Beggar So and Drunken, uh, you know, Drunken Boxing that you'd see, um, and also Gordon Liu played that character too in another movie, so it's kind really? of it, yeah. Um, I don't know, yeah, Dion, what'd you think? No, I thought it was a great scene, except for it is kind of unbelievable that he would learn enough to be <laughs> yeah. a, a master in another style in that sort of a time you know so and it wasn't even him teaching it was just like him he was watching. learning his, yeah his friends were basically fighting beggar so and he was just watching and trying to emulate what beggar so was doing and it was enough for him to use it pretty effectively in one of the fights right like um I, one scene I do want to talk about. I really like the the scene where the the guy with the katana tries to give him the katana after he's been beaten and he doesn't yeah. take it. And there's this whole cultural miscommunication. I thought that it, that to me was kind of like a I don't know that that reflected a lot of what was going on in the movie. So I thought that was kind of a cool scene. But I don't know if you guys had any other thoughts on that one. 
Yeah, well, those like if I remember correctly, because I it's now been maybe it's something like a week or so since I watched it. <laughs> if I remember correctly, it's that guy who he so after after one of the fights, he kind of walks up to one of the guy and kind of clasps him on the shoulder and like kind of nods and then walks off. I think it was that guy, or was it a different guy? I can't remember, but I think that was the kind of turning point in the movie where he, uh, Gordon Liu's character, kind of finally realizes, oh, these guys aren't that bad after all, and he kind of sort of shows his newfound respect for them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought that that scene was pretty interesting. If you don't know what he's trying to do, show him that, yes, you've got the best of me and I respect you. You, it gets taken off in a wrong direction. I, you know, it was like, well, obviously because of the cultural difference, Gordon Liu didn't know what was going on. But misunderstandings always happen like that. And uh, yeah, they portrayed that pretty well, including the the. You know, I watched it dubbed, so it was. When you watch it dubbed, you don't. It's not quite the same. But when you're watching it in the original Chinese version, they have the Japanese guy speaking Japanese, and so you can tell, especially me, since I can so I could understand the Chinese, not the Japanese. I had no idea what the Japanese guys were saying, like no subtitles. Remember, so I, I really picked up on that, and I think they portrayed it pretty well because that kind of stuff is exactly what happens in real life, you know. And uh, I, I want to get to the marriage in general and just sort of how it evolves over the course of the movie. But before we do, I know that we've been saying Gordon Liu this whole time. And I know, Jeremy, that's always been sort of a point of contention with you. So I just want you to get I want to give you the moment to, like, explain to people, uh, you know, how that's pronounced, because uh, I know you've brought that up to me in the past. And I, and I still consistently never pronounce it the way that you tell me to. Um, <laughs> well, first of all, it's you know, it doesn't matter. I I, I know. You know, Lucy Liu popularized, I think, the pronunciation of Liu. And I know Chinese people in America who have that name and they pronounce it Liu as well. But, you know, it's technically technically pronounced Liu. Sorry, if, if you use the correct tones, it's Liu. But if you're using American English, it would be Liu. Uh, his Chinese name is Liu Jiahui. Um, but again, you know, it's different in Cantonese. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll just, you know, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. I'll, I'll go with, <laughs> with Lou. It's fine. So, but uh, the, um, so, so I don't know, what'd you guys think of the marriage? Like the, just the, the, the that part of the story. Uh, Cause it kind of, it, it, there's a lot of fights, but interwoven with that, you get, you, you see sort of how their relationship evolves and, you know, it, it, it reaches a, a, a level of tranquility by the end, I think. Yeah, I found it kind of interesting that he didn't want to marry her in the first place because I guess she was ugly as a child. They said they called her ugly and lumpy in the dubs. Ugly and lumpy. (laughs) Um, So, you know, he didn't want to marry her. He wanted to find someone that he would find true love with. But eventually that kind of comes around. Like you said, they do find peace and harmony in their marriage. I thought that Oh, I hate to say this. I hate I hate that she gave in so quickly. Oh, that she, that she, she that she kind of had a change of heart like midway yeah, through the movie. She acquiesced really. I thought for me quickly because she at the beginning seemed to be like a really strong woman and no mm. one nothing would bend her. But um I don't know. It is a it is a two hour movie and it would have to happen before the end. I just thought it happened sooner than I would have expected it. Well, and I thought the reason that she did that at that time was because she was moved by him uh, dueling with the, 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 the guys from Japan. Do you know what I mean? I thought, I thought that mm-hmm. it was that she was, uh, that she maybe, I, I, I got the impression she really didn't respect him that much up until the point when he, started fighting these guys and then that's when she started to respect him do you know what i mean well yeah well after what jeremy said that he was kind of unlikable at the beginning when he was explaining to her uh, yeah i wouldn't like him either if he was kind of like talking down yeah yeah because he wouldn't have the respect because even with oh go ahead i'm sorry no you go ahead i was gonna say even with the dubs he still comes off as kind of a jerk like i remember thinking like he really should like you know bend a little bit and you know like 
you know, this is his wife. You can't, you can't just crap all over her, her style of martial arts or, you know what I mean? He was just, he just was inflexible. Um, and I just know from, you know, experience, you just can't be that way. And, uh, <laughs> it's not going to work. Um, but well, it, uh, a couple of things, <clears throat> um, excuse me, uh, Again, yeah, like the, you know, he really comes across as being like lecturing her and like educating her. And I, I really don't like when people do that yeah. to me. So that's one of the things that kind of, and I, they definitely toned it down in the, in the English dub, at least he comes across, even though his, the words he's saying are lecturing, at least he's very, you know, gentle yeah. and mild. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I actually, I agreed too about her, like basically, I mean, I, I wasn't too concerned about it personally because I, I get what they were doing. Like they set up the whole thing and then they're like, all right, now it's time to do the duels for the rest of the yeah. movie. And they kind of drop the character development. But basically yeah. she like hated him, hated him, hated him. Then all of a sudden she shows up in like Chinese clothes and is like totally supporting him. I'm like, yeah. what? Well, like how, how did that happen? <laughs> like it, there was no, nothing that explained that in the story. Although what you said, Brennan, you know, it makes sense. It's just, they didn't really make it. It's not clear to the viewer at all. That was just, and that's just my sense. You know what I mean? Because the yeah. whole, because like she has such contempt for him and it's funny. She, she like early in the movie, she has a couple of good lines against him. Like at, like at one point he's like, you know, no, that, that Japanese style is no good. Let me show you Chinese footwork. And he starts doing the Chinese footwork and she said you look like a girl dancing do you know what I mean and it just like you know like all these little these, these emasculating things that she's saying to him and uh, you know well, it, I do have to say you know being in a so I am in a you know multicultural multi-language relationship um, and have been for a while and you know the although it's exaggerated in, in the movie for you know dramatic and comedic effect it's 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 no joke in real life i mean like you know these kind of misunderstandings yep. culturally and language wise you know happen all the time but you know it's it, it took a while before me and my wife kind of got on the same page because she's you know it's not japanese chinese it's chinese american but they're probably even more different than i guess japanese and, and chinese um but uh, I sort of sympathize with both of them in some of the, you know, misunderstandings and, and, and differences, you know, like, for example, <clears throat> um, in the, was it the breakfast scene where, you know, she, or was it dinner? I forget where she wants to sit on the ground. Cause that's what Japanese people do. And yeah. he wants to sit at the table and then they're like, it ends up with a food fight. Basically. Those, those <laughs> scenes were actually quite interesting. I thought, because those are, those are like, you know, kind of like fundamental ways of doing things that you, you know, it's hard to find a compromise, right? Like, like, I'm, you know, like, and, and they, and they, I guess the compromise they found was she sat on the ground and he sat at the table, but like, that's the kind of thing that, that seemed like a legitimate sort of cultural difference that would lead to a conflict to me. Um, and also I liked how it was the setup for what happens after when she starts throwing the eggs and, you know, it, it was also a good setup for the, the, the action sequence that followed. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, I mean, I especially food stuff. That's a that's a you know a a way that multicultural couples who aren't you know familiar with the other culture are going to run into some. I guess I guess this kind of brings up another thing that I was thinking about was just <clears throat> considering that the guy's dad has, was supposedly doing business with Japan for so many years. I did find it a little surprising that he was so ignorant of Japanese culture. You, you would think he would have known a little bit about that. That That's true. That was a little bit striking. I mean, maybe he just, you know, maybe the dad just never, uh, never shared any of his experiences with his son. Cause he even had to ask how to say hello in Japanese, like, which even I know, do you know what I mean? And I know nothing yeah, about Japan, yeah. you know? So it was, uh, you know, but, but also I think he was one of these guys that was just, he, I don't think he had any, his character didn't seem to have any interest in Japan at all. So, it, it, yeah, you know, interest, there's another interesting thing that this will, for anybody who um, is a fan of the, uh, you know, Chinese translated novels um, will, will, will appreciate this. So in the, in the dub, and I'm not sure about the sub, but definitely in the dub, the servants call him master. And they also call his dad master. But in Chinese, they actually use the more like, um, formal terms and what and then what what they call him is they actually call him young master so that okay. typical young master stereotype of the you know arrogant and like uh you know 
whatever young master that's literally exactly what he is and that's what they call him in in chinese is the young master and uh and also uh what do you guys think in terms of what kind of movie is this like would you file it under kung fu do you think it has some wuxia elements do you like you know what's your what's your take on the category i mean i would put it more in kung fu personally i mean Although I, I do get what you're saying about those elements. In the end, it's like, first of all, it's in, you know, I would call it modern China. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like so many of the Wuxia tropes are not present. It does have, you know, the fighting elements of Wuxia, although there's no real lightness flying around. and, and Yeah, things. yeah. So I, I would I would be more inclined to, to put it in Kung Fu than Wuxia, personally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would totally agree. I would have never even thought to call it a wuxia movie. Yeah, I think I think it's well. I to me sometimes these kung fu movies feel a little wuxia like in the way that they populate their martial world. Do you know what I mean? With with these characters, like the guy with the twitchy nose. Do you know what I mean? Seemed kind of like a wuxia type character. Um, but yeah, I would agree. It's 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 I think primarily kung fu. Um, you know, and the only the only the only real wuxia element aside from the characters would be the 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 use of weaponry. Like, there's a lot of different kinds of weapons, but it's mm-hmm. but even that's not quite done in like the wuxia way. Do you know what I mean? It's done more in like the kung fu, you know, style of doing it. Um, but yeah, so so all right, so uh, ratings and recommendations now jeremy you've never done this with us before i believe so what we do is we rate it on a scale of one to four and then we just say you know you know our overall view of it and whether we would recommend it to people and uh, i'll have me and dion go first so that you know you can sort of see what the blueprint of this is uh, and there are no 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 halves you can't say like two and a half or, you gotta pick something and so i'll st- so so one is bad four is good yeah four is yes. yeah yeah four is like thumbs up one is thumbs down. Um, and so I would give this movie a three. I, 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 I think it's, it's, it's up there with a lot of the other Lau Kar Lung films in terms of, uh, you know, it, it has all, it, the martial arts are really good. It's got really well thought out fight sequences and it's got an interesting sort of family situation surrounding it. And so I, 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 I and I, and I like, I, I, the, the wife character really worked for me early in the movie. I do think the downs, the reason that this movie doesn't have a four for me is like people were saying, they, they kind of drop that thread a little bit midway through. And there's a, there's like a reason, like, it's not like, like they almost don't have a choice, but I feel like it sort of loses some of its heart as a result of that not really being fully explored. So it has the good martial arts, a good situation, but it doesn't have like the full Lao Kar Lung heart for me that I would give it a four, like with my young auntie or something. So uh, Dion, what what do you say? I also give it a three. I think it's a very, uh, a very good movie. I like that the, the premise was kind of unique. You really don't see anything like this with the marriage between um, a Chinese and a Japanese and then kind of bringing all out war into the house. Um, It doesn't get a four for me because I need a strong emotional response to the movie, um, which it doesn't have for me, but it is a good fun movie. I enjoy watching all the different weapons from both countries coming out and all the different styles that they show it gives you kind of like a taste of what you could see in other movies that explore like one or two weapons specifically. Um, I just, I think also I like the wife as a strong female character, but they did drop too much of her and made her submissive too quickly um, I think that they could have explained it a little bit better and maybe showed us somehow how she became more on his side and less on their side. Um, not that she really had to pick sides, but um, it's definitely a three for me. And Jeremy? Yeah, I mean, I pretty much agree. It's uh, I I go three. I would say it's cool. I'll watch it again one day probably. The... Uh, all the things we talked about before are the reasons why I, you know, 
would drop it from my original, you know, 10 or five years ago, or whatever, four to, to three. Um, but it's still cool. The, you know, the fight choreography is really cool. The concept is interesting. Um, the character development's okay. The final result is is good. I, I like how, I, I I'm a sucker for you know the the martial artists all are brothers in the end kind of thing. Like uh -huh. I, I always fall for that. So I definitely kind of like the the end result, and I would definitely recommend it. Yeah, I do. I do like how they. A lot of it seemed to hinge on them taking that. Um, I forget the character's name, but the 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 Japanese instructor that 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 she seemed to have a, a, a life lifelong friendship with uh they introduce him he almost looks a little bit sleazy and like the love mm -hmm. rival and then by the end he sort of win he kind of wins you over so you know i i think that was a, a, a you know one of the things that worked about the movie um yeah so uh so we'll uh we'll you know we'll end it there and i i don't dion do, do we have another movie lined up or are we still debating what movie to do next do you know we're still debating okay all right so we'll have another film up uh, and we'll, we'll talk about that when the time comes. But until then, we will talk to you later. God!